Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Monday, March 27th, around 6.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. An ultra-rare hybrid solar eclipse is coming in April, and we'll have all the details in a moment. But the big story, April is coming at us like a freight train. Already busy tornado season has meteorologists nervous for peak season. Keep calm. It's boom time. And nervous indeed. It has been an active season. This is the annual trend of U.S. US tornado reports, and we are now, well, about to jump up into another level, potentially. Already high up in the standings of previous counts in previous years. So buckle up, it's just beginning. And winter isn't ending. A winter storm warning issued for Lake Tahoe. Heavy snow expected on Tuesday. That will be the beginning or their lose day. Solitude Mountain is going to have the longest season after record-breaking snowfall. And this is in Utah, and Solitude isn't the only one. Alta, Brighton, and Snow Basin, all of them break their all-time snow records. Let's start with Alta. They are now at 748 inches for this season. 748 inches. That was the last record. They blasted past that. They're at 761. That is insane. And it's going to snow much more in the coming weeks. So this could go over 800 inches of snow. Think about that. 70 feet of snow. Totally insane. In Brighton, not much different. They're at 765 inches, another record level. Over at Snow Basin, they're not that deep, but they got to 504 inches today. So that is some, that is some deep snow, and that's going to be some in, insane whitewater rivers and lots of those lakes and basins filling. And I hope you got your helmet on. Here's the hail map for Sunday, March 26. Over 218,000 reports, 542 additional reports with hail larger than 1.75 inches. <whistles> Holy macaroni. All the links will be below to everything we talk about in tonight's podcast. And here's the forecast. Severe thunderstorms and flooding threat the southeast. Next Pacific storm coming to the west, isolated to widely scattered severe thunderstorms are possible across Georgia into southern South Carolina today with large hail, damaging and gusty winds. Excessive rainfall, which may lead to flash flooding, is the primary risk. Then another Pacific storm will bring additional rounds of heavy rain and mountain snow and high winds to California and southern Oregon late today into Wednesday. Click on your county for more information. You can see all those green dots. That is how saturated this region is. And, well, flood warnings and watches are everywhere. Let's take a look at the severe weather threat here. Let me just move this back. It looks like... Tuesday down here in the southeast, Mississippi, Alabama, could be a severe threat. That's going to be moving across uh, near Georgia and offshore here uh, by Wednesday, so overnight. So Tuesday and Wednesday night you could have some severe weather, and you could see that system then moving in to the west to bring heavy snow starting on Tuesday. That is their lose day. Heavy snow in the northern Sierras, over four feet showing right there. So, like swimwear. And then that storm Thursday is going to move into the four corners Thursday and Friday. Hopefully we can get over the pass to the San Luis Valley for the event uh, over the weekend. So that is your few day snow forecast. If we move the models out, another major system moving through the northern plains should be happening over the weekend. And that will bring more snow. To the northeast like a beast. It's been a fierce spring as freeze grips Siberia. Record March cold tears across Scandinavia. Minus 34 Fahrenheit in Utah. Holy macaroni. And the latest snowfall ever for Yushan, Taiwan. Holy macaroni. Well, the snow's not over in Europe either. It looks like Eastern Europe's going to be the big winner in spring here. Ding, ding. So buckle, keep your snow shovels handy. As the mainstream media continues to lie to you, the Greenland ice sheet is close to a melting point of no return. According to a new study based on CO2, of all the dumbest things ever, 
Yeah. If all they have to do is go over and look at the surface mass budget of Greenland, and you will see for the last six, seven months, well above the 40-year average there. So Greenland is not melting and then not approaching a tipping point. In fact, for months here, well above all-time records for October, November, and December for ice gain. Seismic update. We did have a rumbler, 6.1, just kick off in the Solomon Islands. That was at a depth of 86 kilometers. Probably very few people felt that. Some more activity happening here at Blot Echo in the Fiji region. So keep a close eye on this for some larger activity maybe in the future. But overall, no quakes of note. Looks like the Hawaiian Islands getting active. Maybe Kilauea is about to erupt again. Worldwide Volcano News. Nothing much to report on. Nothing spectacular. Nothing significant. Same thing happening over on the sun. It's like a solar minimum sun, peppered with sunspots, very little flaring, all in the low sea range. Three-day geomagnetic forecast is for KP 2 to 3, flat. We were psychic just about six hours ago. All is quiet on the sun. All is quiet on discover solar wind. Solar cycle 25 looking about as strong as 24 as we move forward into solar max. Now let's talk about an ultra rare hybrid solar eclipse that's coming in April. Now for most of you listening, this is not for you, but those that are in Australia and the Southern Hemisphere, this ultra rare hybrid solar eclipse is coming in April and no one's bumming. April 20th, 2023, mark your calendar. Now, a hybrid eclipse is a combination of both an annular eclipse and a total eclipse. Typically, it starts out as an annular eclipse, spends most of its time as a total eclipse, and then ends as an annular eclipse. So it goes from this to this and back to this. Very fascinating. It's all based on the position of the sun and the moon. The only people that will get to see it in totality along this line here in Papua New Guinea and on the tippy tip of the Cape Range National Park, especially in Ixmouth. There's going to be a lot of people right there, I bet. Holy mackerel, that is in a remote area. I wonder how long it would take to go from Sydney there. Jesus. But that is the path of the hybrid eclipse. Not a lot of people are going to be able to see it, but you can see something here. Everyone in New Zealand, everyone in Australia will see something. Everyone in Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Papua New Guinea will see some of the spectacle. But a lucky few on this path will see the totality of the hybrid. And this area is going to be packed. Mark my words. Now, it just gets crazier and crazier what the mainstream media puts out there. Asteroid the size of 33 armadillos to pass Earth Sunday. Well, clearly the armadillos didn't hurt because it's Monday, or hit because it's Monday. Now, the asteroid 2023 FL2 is apparently 33 armadillos long. Ding dong. New data reveals Earth is closer to the black hole and is moving at 16,000 miles per hour faster. Oh my God, it's the end. A Japanese radio astronomy project revealed Earth is 2,000 light years closer to the supermassive black hole at the Milky Way Center. The data also showed the planet is moving 7 kilometers per second or 16,000 miles per hour faster in orbit around this galactic center. Now, the findings don't mean Earth is in more danger from being sucked into a black hole. It simply reflects better modeling, according to them. There's the black hole, according to them. And there's us, and we're moving 16,000 miles per hour faster than ever thought. Now, satellite images show the breadth of the massive seaweed belt stretching across the Atlantic Ocean. Large piles of sargassum seaweed could prove problematic for coastal destinations, even though this seaweed is very beneficial to protecting dunes. But it's not good for tourism, so... We don't like the seaweed. They could actually feed the entire starving population of the planet with this sargassum seaweed bloom. There it is. Not that exciting. What is exciting is a 1,500-pound great white shark named Breton is currently swimming off the coast of North Carolina. Now, good news for swimmers. Great whites of this size typically don't come in to eat people. So there is that. All the links will be below. 
Now, thank goodness for the Green New Deal and the push to move away from fossil fuels because we couldn't get pollution like you're about to see otherwise. The nickel boom in Indonesia threatens not all the, only farmers, but the livelihoods and families and communities. It continues the destruction of the world to save the world. As Philadelphia is monitoring a drinking water after a chemical plant spill, we reported on this yesterday. Now they have shut off all the municipal water coming into Philadelphia. And that is bad news. What are they going to do? A pipe ruptured on Friday at a chemical plant, Trinseo PLC, leaking hazardous materials into a tributary of the Delaware River, a source of water for millions of people. Officials asked people to drink bottled water, leading to empty shelves across the entire city. But local authorities said later on Sunday there had been no contamination in the water system. We have enough tap water to sustain safe use for drinking, cooking, and all purposes through at least 11.59 p.m. Monday, March 27th. Well, that's just in a few hours. The Delaware River Basin supplies water to 15 million people across four states. The Pennsylvania chemical spill occurred after a pipe burst at Trinseo PLC on Friday, leaking 81,000 gallons of latex-based solution into Otter Creek in Bucks County. Sounds delicious. This is just northeast of Philadelphia. Clearly, that creek is now dead. And the water is safe to drink. Maybe they could have used this new wood-based technology that can easily purify contaminated water. This is just coming out today. Take a look. Researchers at Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden have developed a new, fantastic, bio-based material, a form of powder-based on cellulose nanocrystals to purify water from pollutants, including textile dyes. When the polluted water passes through the filter with cellulose powder, the pollutants are absorbed, and the sunlight entering the treatment system causes them to break down quickly and efficient, efficiently. Laboratory tests have shown that at least 80% of the dye pollutants are removed with the new method and material. So, good news for, for the dye industry. I didn't know they were polluting the earth so much. Now I do. Now you do. Who knew? The two best high-protein foods to eat every day to blast off that belly fat, black beans and salmon. That's what mama always said. So gobble them up. Now just a side note, in the Clean 15, we pointed out pineapple yesterday, and a good friend of mine who has a connection to big pineapple told me that the pineapple industry is the most toxic and polluting industry on the planet. So if you're going to eat pineapple, make sure it's organic, period. Now, this is mind-blowing. I thought the U.S. government was against cryptocurrency. The truth is the U.S. government holds more Bitcoin than MicroStrategy and Tesla combined. In fact, the number one largest holder. They own slightly over 1% of the entire circulating supply of Bitcoin worth $5.7 billion. That's 205,000 Bitcoin in the possession of the U.S. government. So if they wanted to and Bitcoin pops, let's say Bitcoin goes to a million, well, the U.S. government will have made trillions of dollars. Most of this Bitcoin has been collected through government seizures, and that is mind-boggling alone. Hey, do you have a question that's, or a burning desire to have a one-on-one -on -one or a consultation with Diamond? You can do it over at our new website, 5.me backslash diamond. You can start a conversation thread and ask me anything. Just join the community. It's free. We only have 35 members, but there have already been 26 conversations and questions answered. And that is a boom. We'll see you at the San Luis Valley Seed Exchange. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Give us a thumbs up. We're shadow banned, so we need you to share this on your social media for us to grow. Support the channel by becoming a Patreon or a paid member on 5.me. And we'll see you soon. And that was a boom. Greetings.